Last Tuesday, just as Sublime Text Live was about to launch here on the channel, which we do every week, shameless plug, Sublime HQ officially announced publicly Sublime Text 4 in the form of a tweeted teaser video showing off briefly some of the features that are going to be in the new builds. Now, no release date has been stated as of yet, but I think it's safe to say that Sublime Text 4 is officially almost upon us. <laughs> Hey, hello fellas, it's Blind Text Finex, Odan Nerd, and welcome to this week's video where we're going to do a little bit of a breakdown of the teaser video that Sublime HQ released on their Twitter feed last Tuesday, publicly announcing Sublime Text 4. Now, if you've been around on the channel for any appreciable length of time, then you'll know that Sublime Text 4 has actually been in discrete beta for a little bit over a year now. If you were a member of the Sublime Text Discord, you could have been using it all this time. It, of course, is talked about in the issue tracker as bugs are fixed and resolved in that version, and it's been mentioned here and there, but this tweet marks the first time that it's been publicly announced to the world at large. Now, this teaser video is very short, shows a lot of juicy things, but doesn't go into any great detail on them. And I thought it would be cool to sort of break this down since this has just been publicly announced and talk just a little bit more about what we're seeing in this video if you haven't seen this sort of stuff before here on the channel. Now, we're only going to do this uh, in a very brief overview. There's a ton of more information on Sublime Text 4 to cover. More that will probably come out of Sublime HQ themselves. As as things go forward. So if you haven't already done so, you're going to want to use those buttons down below to thumb, subscribe, and share, and ring the bell notification icon so you get all the Sublime Text 4 news as it happens. The first thing the video talks about is tab multi-select, which is something that we did briefly cover in last week's video. Now here in this video, it shows us selecting multiple files directly out of the sidebar, but there's a variety of ways you can do this. Sidebar, you can also do this by multiply selecting tabs up in the tab bar for files that are already open. There are key bindings that will allow you to select tabs adjacent to the one that you already have open. And as we'll see in upcoming things in this very uh, teaser video, things like the auto completion panel and the symbol definitions pop up also allows us to do this as well. These all do the same thing no matter what it is that you do that does this, whether it's any of these things or a plugin that does the same thing. It multiply selects tabs, allowing the contents of all of those tabs to appear displayed inside of the file area without disrupting the layout of the window, whether you have columns, rows, or anything like that. This makes it incredibly easy to peek into the contents of another file to look at some sort of reference to see what things are while you're working in a different file and then quickly close that one up and go back to the layout you were in without disrupting anything else. Very powerful feature. One of the great new features of Sublime Text 4 is symbol details. This provides additional information when we're looking at symbols to allow us to determine more visually what a symbol is or to select the correct one. The teaser shows this in the symbol list, but this also works in other places as well. Now this entails a couple of things. First of all, there's this kind information along the left hand side that's going to be a colored icon, if you will, that gives you an indication whether something might be markup, a function, or something else. There can be a character or any other symbol there, and it is also marked up by color. And also each entry is annotated with the syntax where the symbol actually came from. If you've ever worked in a multi-language project where some symbols might appear in multiple places, you'll find this invaluable in narrowing in on the one that you actually want because it's a lot easier to see. And these visual upgrades aren't just in the symbol list, they're in other places as well. Again, as we'll see in a moment, they happen in the definition pop-up, but these are also available to plug-in authors in quick panels and in a command palette items uh, when you're selecting arguments for commands, allowing for greater flexibility and to display while choosing things. The teaser talks about the enhanced definition pop-up, which is the same definition pop-up we've known and loved in Sublime Text, enhanced with the new functionalities that we've seen previously in the teaser trailer. One of those would be kind information next to the symbol that you hovered over top of to let you know what that is. And the other is that when you actually want to go to the definition or reference of a symbol, instead of just opening it in a normal tab, we can also have it open in a selected tab to the right by clicking the icon next to the name of the file that we want to view, or by using a keyboard modifier when we click on the name itself, which again allows you to side-by-side -side view a file and its reference without disrupting the layout of the screen that you have in front of you, which is a great feature. And if you're not a mouse user, not to worry, this functionality is also available from the keyboard as well. One of the major new features in Sublime Text 4 is improved autocomplete. The teaser touches on this in brief detail, and we're going to do that here as well because there's a lot of things that have changed about this, way more than we can cover in a simple video overlaying something like this. So if you haven't already done so, you're going to want to use those buttons down below my head to thumb subscribe and share and ring the bell notification icon so you'll know when those videos become available. But as I say, there's been a lot of changes to this. And the first one of those, the major one, is that the symbol list that is used to populate the autocompletion list now draws from all of the symbols available in all of 
of the files in your project, not just ones that are open in the window. And if you've ever edited a large project, you'll know what a time saver this is. It makes this a whole lot cooler than it used to be in the past. Also, the auto completion panel has received a visual uplift using the same functionalities as we've seen in the symbol kind information that now appears here in the auto completion panel as well. So each completion can optionally have a colored icon alongside of the left hand side of it to let you know what it actually is. An annotation along the right, which was already there, but also another annotation along the bottom of the window that changes as the selected item is changed in the auto completion panel to show you more information and more detail about what this completion is actually going to do. All of this together combines to give you way more power in figuring out exactly which completion it is to actually going to be injecting. Along those lines, we also have improvements such as being able to hide snippets from this list because they sometimes get in the way when you're expecting a symbol and there are snippets defined for a particular language. Sublime Text 4 also has the ability to hide snippets that are, have been defined in packages if you don't actually want to use them, which is an extra little pro tip on something like this. And the auto completion system also has some cool new heuristics in it. Uh, these allow it to do things like reorder the completions that are going to be in inserted into the, uh, the panel depending on how likely it is it thinks you're going to pick them, so it takes less time for you to choose them. It has heuristics that allow it to determine if a symbol is mostly used uh, with a period after it or with parentheses after it or a space after it, it will inject those automatically, optionally for you if you like. The one for inserting parentheses is even smart enough to know if there's normally stuff inside of the parentheses like arguments and when it expands out, it will actually put the cursor inside of them so you can autocomplete the name of a function and just be typing the arguments for it that much faster and easier. It also has the ability to figure out when you're assigning a value to a particular symbol what the common values for that are and automatically include those values into the autocompletion panel as well to make that that much easier. Sublime Text 4 has built-in TypeScript, TSX, and JSX support. These are languages that previously required you to install a third-party syntax, but those are now shipped with Sublime Text by default and powered by its powerful new syntax highlighting engine, which has additional capabilities that make it more powerful than it has ever been. Now, if you combine this with the auto-completion changes that we've seen, and you're a web developer and you're not using Sublime Text, you may want to give this a try just to see how much better this experience is than anything you've ever seen before. And if you were to also include the third-party LSP package, your, your productivity would probably shoot right through the roof. The teaser mentions auto dark mode switching and themed title bar support, which allows Sublime Text's user interface to change the color of its title bar and change the color of its theme and its color schemes depending on whether the overall operating system is light or dark. However, we've covered that in a previous video, which I have linked down in the description below. So that's going to do it for this particular te teaser video. There is some exciting new stuff on the horizon for Sublime Text 4. I can't wait for Sublime HQ to talk more about it. I can't wait to share more of it with you. So if you haven't already done so, use those buttons down below my head to thumb subscribe and share and ring the bell notification icon because when we cover this, you're going to want to know about it. And remember, tomorrow, if you're watching this on the day this video drops, we're doing a Sublime Text Live right here on the channel. You could ask questions about Sublime Text 4 there as well. Whether I see you in the live stream or in the next video, this is Odette Nerd asking you to please have a sublime day.